Hey everyone, this is Elias from Red Match Media, and on today's episode of Project Miata, The Answer, yes, first of all, I'd like to thank the team over at Track Prep Performance. They are actually sponsoring this video. I want to thank them for all the parts that we have for this episode, and go check them out. They have a ton of parts for Miatas and other cars as well, and they're great to talk to. I told them, this is the project that I have. What do we need to do first? They said, let's start with maintenance. And the big thing today we're gonna tackle is the shifter rebuild. Cause I'm getting a little bit of a slop on my shifter. And uh, yeah, they said, this is the kit that you're gonna need. So a couple of washers in here and a couple of boots that can have a tendency of going out. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and tackle that. So let's get started. Now, there is a little bit of a slop in my shifter. So the team over at Track Prep Performance said, yeah, let's go ahead and get that rebuilt. It's actually a really easy process. And the important thing is they do vary between generations. They vary between uh, types of, you know, five speed or six speed. There are little, little differences. So definitely reach out to them so they can provide you to Track Prep Performance so they can provide you with the right parts and again, guys, this is such an easy thing to do to, and really get such a great result. And yeah, let's get started. So first, really just a matter of getting the shift knob off. And we do have to take off the whole center uh, console here. So we'll, we'll take off a couple of screws. Now with this, make sure you guys chalk your wheels. So put something so that the car doesn't roll because you are gonna have to put this in neutral. So it's in neutral there. And uh, this might get in the way. So putting the handbrake down uh, to, you know, make things accessible or you may need to actually put it up. So it just depends, um, but always safety first and make sure that you put that there. And yeah, it's literally just gonna be a couple of screws to get that off on the sides and a couple of screws in here as well. So, We'll take those guys out and then it's just a matter of sliding that back and that should be pretty much everything as far as disassembly of non this area. So let me go ahead and get that started. You can see that I just simply take off the two on the side and then the two that are in the armrest. Now, once you're done with that, make sure not to pull the center console too much because there is a cable underneath. Okay, so I took off the center console, important thing, when you unscrew those different screws, you saw me struggling. Uh, you're gonna have the wire that you're gonna need to go ahead and take off because that is the adapter or the, the harness for the power windows. So you'll wanna do that. Guys, get yourself one of these. They're so cheap. Amazon, I'll put the link to mine, but these are so useful because it's uncomfortable, this guy, was basically right up here. And it's just a matter of literally just prying inside here and getting it out. So super easy, just pry, just put this guy in, take it out. Now, the problem that I did have was with this guy. So there's like a, uh, another little like button kind of thing that went in here. And that was kind of a pain to, literally I had to force it out because there's, I did not see a way of kind of fixing that because there's no way to pry that. So a uh, little bit of force, just if you break it, I don't think it's crucial. It's just kind of keep the wiring nice and tidy. And yeah, once you get that out, this is what you get. So get this guy out. <laughs> so you'll still want to keep those. They do sell uh, these uh, items uh, to help out with heat, help out with noise, that kind of thing. Uh, but this is basically what we're going to work on. So we have four screws here, one, two, three, four, uh, that will go ahead and replace this. This doesn't look too bad, um, but you know, just age, want to make sure that I'm already here basically. So I might as well repair that or, or change it. But yeah, we're going to be taking this off and taking a look at how our shifter looks. But overall, yeah, I mean, that's basically one of the biggest steps we have to do. And then we'll We'll dive in here. All 
we went ahead and we took off those four screws and the cover, the rubber uh, top cover. And yeah, here we have our, our shifter. We can see, yeah, that's pretty much my floor. So that's why that insulation definitely you want to keep it um, or replace it. And yeah, now the next thing is we're going to go ahead and take off these three so that the shifter can then come off and we should be set to go from there. So we took off the three screws and yeah, there's some fluid there, which is what you need. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but yeah, just make sure you, you have a rag or something to catch it. I'm just kind of letting it drain out a little bit and then catch it and put it in here. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and take this out of the car so we don't dirty our interior. Um, yeah, guys, I don't know if zip ties... <laughs> I'm so glad, thank you Track Prep Performance for telling me, yeah, you're gonna wanna fix that because uh, the surprises you find on a used car. So let's go back and see what we have here. And yeah, so here obviously we need to clean out uh, the, the fluid that's in there. We're going to need to fill it up. I'll put how much we need to, I forget, I have to look at the manual. Uh, right underneath there, I'll tell you how much and uh yeah make sure you have a little syringe it's gonna make things so much easier to fill that up uh, so now as far as the other things we need to get in so actually let's start with that fluid getting it out now some people for this they use a turkey baster uh, i actually found out that this little medicine thing that you use for like kids medicine worked out really well because it really creates a lot of suction compared to a turkey baster which really sometimes isn't the best, especially with a little bit of fluid like this. And then make sure that you keep things clean to avoid any debris falling. Okay, so we went ahead and we took out all the fluid that was in there and you're definitely going to want to use a syringe. So I have the syringe in there uh, and that's what we got out of it. Not sure uh, if that's what we're supposed to have in there. Um, doesn't seem like a lot, but again, it's not a lot that we're supposed to really put in there. Uh, but it does look super, it actually looks kind of green, uh, which I'm not sure if that's what I want your transmission fluid to look like. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and put some in there. But before we do so, we are going to clean that up and we need to also take out the uh, pin. So I'll show you what we need to do to get that pin out. Basically, uh, we're going to get some pliers. So I'll kind of just show you really quick. So you'll want to protect the top one. Because uh, you're going to technically just put that there and squeeze. See if I can get a better shot. Put that in there and squeeze it. But making sure that you don't, right in here, that you don't put the other side of the plier. Let me see if I can light this up a little bit better. Uh, because there's going to be a tiny lip that you want to catch it on. You don't want to go a little bit too low because then that's just... The screw itself and you're gonna go nowhere so you definitely need to push one out so that then you can get the other little guys in okay so pro tip <laughs> yeah this is how much leverage um i needed so that is again just really in there again the i, I did have something protecting that i just have it on there for show right now but the pin basically caught that you know, catch that with the pin. And here, just grab a little bit of the edge. Make sure not to go too low. And it was a pain in the ass to just do it by itself. So I could, you know, had to kind of leverage myself to get this to squeeze. So that, that squeeze and you'll hear a pop. Do not worry, the pop is normal. So don't freak out uh, when you hear it. But yeah, pro tip, you're gonna wanna do something like this. If you have another set of pliers, to really squeeze that because it does need a lot of force. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and get those little guys out. So we went ahead and we took out some of the bushings and uh, yeah, you see that half circle there? <laughs> that should not be a half circle. It should actually be a full circle. So I'm kind of glad that we are doing this uh, 
because we did have some slop. It wasn't too much on the shifter, um, but yeah, we don't want half pieces uh, there. We want to go full send. So yeah, glad we are getting that. So let's go ahead and just start to reassemble everything. Okay, so here we have all the pieces that we're gonna install for the five speed and the NB. Again, I can only speak for mine. 2001 because these guys do change depending on the type of transmission and I believe year So just be sure again best bet reach out to track prep performance They can set you up with the right one based on the year and transmission that you have but With mine, I'm gonna need the little short boot first or the small boot then uh, this little ring that has the little divots in them go ahead and focus uh, but that's the First thing you're gonna want and then this guy and then this guy goes this half goes inside before those pins that we took out so this is the one that was half uh there i couldn't find the other one hopefully it's not too bad of a of a deal but yeah we couldn't find it hopefully it just broke somewhere out um but that's what we have there and uh we need to go ahead and cut this out now, because we're replacing everything, it's not going to be a problem to just really literally just kind of cut that out to make the uninstall, so to speak, a lot easier. Uh, clean these things up. And this is the other part. Now, turns out uh, I thought this looked pretty good, but in deeper inspection, we saw that there is actually a cut there. So thankfully, we have this guy to install and help out with, you know, just everything. So let's get ahead let's go ahead and uh get this guy cleaned up i got a set of clippers and i cut the zip tie that was holding the rip boot together and then i just continued to rip it more so that i can go ahead and take it off we're not going to be re reusing it so it's a lot easier to just cut it off then you're going to want to go ahead and clean up the shifter and spray some wd-40 to make the new boot easy to install if you don't you're going to be struggling with getting that guy in and then obviously you can clean it afterwards you don't need grease, but you could just, cause this guy is gonna be on the turret itself. So it's just a little bit, it's fine just to kind of get things lubricated and get them installed. So just putting a little bit on there, a little bit on this as well. Again, this stuff is just gonna be already in there. So now it's just a matter of <laughs> not doing that. So it's gonna be a little tricky to kind of put in so we'll do this and yeah there we go yeah nice and smooth good to go So now it's just a matter of putting this guy in first and then this has the grooves so making sure that the grooves go in because again that is what the pin is holding it in with so we'll get that guy in there Nice and snug. Make sure it's all the way in. Next is actually putting the pin back in. Now we've gone ahead and done that. Now we can install the shifter. Now, again, there's a couple of things with the shifter. So making sure that the grooves you see there line up with the pins that are in there. So we put that in. So quick assessment of what we've done. We filled it up. We went ahead and put all the all the bushings that we need to or all the you know pieces in the right order. Again, it depends on what transmission you have. Ask 
track prep performance. They will set you up with what you need as far as your specific transmission and year. And again, we put the uh, smaller boot, which this had the zip tie, but <laughs> yeah, it was there because it was ripped. And yeah, we got the shifter on there. We're gonna just clean this up a little bit. It's got a little bit of WD-40 that we put to help with getting the boot on because uh, yeah it's it's a little bit on the tight side and now our final piece which is our top now we're gonna go ahead and install the boot it's a little hard with one hand we'll go go ahead make sure the the longer or the wider part is up top and the narrow part is at the bottom so we have that there and yeah we basically are there let's go ahead and put the screws on and uh well, actually, before we do that, let's give this a, a try. Yeah. <laughs> These throws feel a lot more committed. Like, it feels like, yes, I want to. Yeah, it's it feels really nice. So, I'm. A, it's such a simple task to, to do, but the reward, the results, you know, is just so much. And you're pretty much done at this point. You have the four screws to finish this up. And then once you go to put your center console, make sure you connect your power windows and anything else that you may have. And same thing with the little insulation so that the heat doesn't come into the cabin through the shifter. And four screws and you're set. Well, there it is. Uh, you can't tell much, but there's a lot of great stuff under there. And yeah, just put the center console in again. Just remember two screws right there and the screws on the side with the little caps. Just use your little pry tool to get those off. But yeah, now these throws feel so much better. There is like zero play in that. Like I am, yeah, there's nothing of play there. It's really, really on there. So that's a huge, huge improvement from what I had. And again they weren't they didn't seem too worn yes i had one that was broken and the shift boot that was one of the boots inside was ripped but it's crazy how much of an improvement it is so now we have the shifter that we're going to put on but not quite so i actually went ahead and i picked this one up from rgr design yeah, so this guy is heavy. You could hit someone with this and do some damage. Uh, that's how nice of a weight this has. So we'll go ahead and put that on there. And once it catches, then it's just a matter of, yeah, these threads are so long on, on the Miata. And there we go. We have our shifter on there. Our, yeah, this feels so much better. It just, yeah, it, it completes the shifter experience. Definitely want to do this. Well, guys, there you have it. I want to definitely thank the team over at Track Prep Performance. Love this shirt. Get their swag. It looks really awesome. There's a bunch of car parts literally in here. Um, but thank you to them. They were able to set me up with what I needed to improve the feel of my shifter. It's such a small thing uh, to, to do, really. The work is nothing. It took me longer to do my steering wheel wrap <laughs> than it did to, to really do this shifter. And the results are so much better. I am loving the feel of it, the throw, the engagement. Just everything is much better. And it's really not that expensive to, to do this. And again, some basic tools, nothing really extravagant, no special tools or anything like that needed. So make sure you check out the website, Track Prep Performance. I'll have the link below in the description so you guys can go get your shifter rebuilt kit because every Miata needs to have this feel of a shifter. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Project Miata, The Answer. And remember, find the right gear and make sure you have a shifter rebuild kit to find that gear. See ya.